Hi all, welcome to my channel where I provide information on all things Ghibli. So, in this video I'll talk about Isao Takahata, the famous co-founder of Studio Ghibli and anecdotes about his perfectionist personality. Compared to his partner and co-founder Hayao Miyazaki, his complete works may not be as celebrated and get as much splash, but I consider Mr. Takahata's films to be powerful and extremely sensitive to the human condition. Behind the scenes, the acclaimed director is said to be meticulous in his craft and painstaking in his direction to his animators. Toshio Suzuki provides many first-person accounts about this. Toshio Suzuki's first meeting with Takahata was around 1980, and he found that the man was quite opposite to Miyazaki. Takahata was incredibly logical-minded and worked at his own pace, where in contrast, Miyazaki was more spontaneous and time-sensitive. Takahata was long-winded in his speech, and Miyazaki was more rapid-fire. Miyazaki is more of an entertainer, and Takahata more of an artist. When Toshio Suzuki started out working with Studio Ghibli, his first film, where he was credited as a producer, was actually the film Only Yesterday in 1991. Takahata was a producer for both Nausicaa and The Castle in the Sky and had prowess in this capacity. But Suzuki recalls that when Takahata took on the role of director, he became a pain in the neck for any producer working with him, including Suzuki. When Takahata first started working for a living, he found lyrics of songs sung from an NHK puppet show called Hyokori Hyotanjima, or Pop-Up Gourd Island, in a magazine. He was intrigued by them and when planning for Only Yesterday started, he asked Suzuki more information about them. Suzuki called an acquaintance at NHK and got videotapes of four episodes. Takahata watched them and found them extremely interesting. But unfortunately for Suzuki, the songs that Takahata wanted were not in these episodes, and he still wanted to hear them. Suzuki called NHK again, but was informed that out of this long TV series, only eight episodes had been captured on video, and Suzuki happened to have four of them. So. Takahata asked, who released the soundtrack? It turned out to be Columbia, but they said that they released the theme song only. Upon hearing this, Takahata said, well, the composer must have the recording. It is his own composition after all. So Suzuki made a visit to Seichiro Uno's house, the composer of the songs, in Meguro, Tokyo. They searched all over the house, and even Mr. Uno's wife helped. Since Mr. Uno made so many songs and his filing of his own music was not organized, it was impossible to find it and their search went in vain. But Takahata refused to give up. I want to hear those songs, he would say. So as Suzuki was in a bind, he ran into a type of rabbit fan that enjoys looking for these types of things. And that person sent out an SOS signal of sorts throughout the country to other rabbit fans. Five days later, the recording was miraculously found. The person who had the recording was from Hokkaido. He sent the tape to Suzuki, and the songs were indeed there. But it was odd. NHK didn't have copies, Columbia didn't have copies, and neither did the composer. Why was it in Hokkaido? It turned out that a decade back, a local radio station was playing the two songs, and he happened to record it. Asking why the songs happened to be available for radio when no one else had it, the fanatical friend responded with an answer. A young lady named Chinatsu Nakayama, who voice dubbed for one of the characters in the series, sang these songs. When she recorded her voice and these songs, her mother would tape these sessions. It was these recordings that the Hokkaido radio station acquired. Suzuki brought these back to the director. Takahata was overjoyed, having good knowledge of music. He was, after all, the musical director for Kiki's Delivery. So it all ended there, right? Not really. Not with Takahata. After hearing the song, the director said, By the way, Suzuki's heart sank. I wonder what the choreography was like. Since it was a puppet show, there had to have been choreography. But of course, no one would have footage of that. But there were puppeteers, right? Takahata would ask. Suzuki trotted his way to Hitomiza Puppet Troupe which is a Japanese 60-person troupe that produces puppet productions. The puppeteer Suzuki was looking for left the company, but through twists and turns, Suzuki managed to get a hold of him and luckily recalled the choreography, much to Suzuki's relief. This enabled Takahata to complete the scene. What was the outcome of all this? The reception of the short scene in the film was lauded as bringing back nostalgia for its viewers. It was given a thumbs up. The next antidote has again to do with the film Only Yesterday and Flowers. Safflowers to be exact. Only Yesterday takes place in Yamagata Prefecture, and the theme is about picking safflowers. Because Takahata is a logical-minded person, he wanted to know every detail about the growing, picking, and processing of safflowers, and made a trip to Yamagata for scenario scouting with Suzuki. There, they visited three farmhouses and learned all the ins and outs from the safflower farmers. 
While at Yamagata, he asked an assistant in Tokyo to collect all books published in Japan about safflowers. Upon their return, Takahata read all of them and took enough notes to fill an entire book. Much later, during film production, he realized that there was one method of safflower processing that differed from the farms he visited earlier, and there was one master at this craft located in Yonezawa. He must be the greatest of the greats. I want to see him, Takahata requested. But we're in the middle of production, Suzuki thought. He managed to persuade the director not to go and to send a number of assistants instead. The assistants showed the master craftsman Takahata's notebook and he said with approval, Yes, this is the correct, orthodox way of doing it. Everything from picking the flowers to the processing is in the film, all due to Takahata's deep research. So those were the two anecdotes about Isao Takahata, retold by Toshio Suzuki. Perhaps perfectionist isn't the correct word usage, but it strongly feels that once the artist has set his sights on something, it's hard for him to deviate from his convictions. I believe we're truly fortunate to have had an artist like Mr. Takahata in our midst while he was alive. There's more stories like this and I would likely post some more in the future. Thank you all for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate your comments. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.